United Nations 18th General Assembly, which opened in an unusually hopeful atmosphere, here's a message of interplanetary importance from President Kennedy, who arrives with Ambassador Adlai Stevenson. Mr. Kennedy is welcomed by Secretary General Uthant and American Delegate Dr. Ralph Bunch. He is the first of many Chiefs of State who are scheduled to address the Assembly. The probable next is Marshal Tito of Yugoslavia. Mr. Kennedy hails the pause in the Cold War while taking note of Cuba and Berlin. Then he makes a startling proposal. Finally, in a field where the United States and the Soviet Union have a special capacity in the field of space, there is room for new cooperation, for further joint efforts in the regulation and exploration of space. I include among these possibilities a joint expedition to the moon. Space offers no problems of sovereignty. By resolution of this assembly, the members of the United Nations have forsworn any claim to territorial rights in outer space or on celestial bodies and declared that international law and the United Nations Charter will apply. Why, therefore, should man's first flight to the moon be a matter of national competition? Why should the United States and the Soviet Union, in preparing for such expeditions, become involved in immense duplications of research, construction, and expenditure? The home team rooters at College Park, Maryland, are in for a bad day and it starts almost from the opening play. Maryland can't get started on the first series of downs against North Carolina State. Humphreys is back to punt on the fourth down, but he can't get it away. The Wolfpack's ball on Maryland's 14. With the game less than four minutes old, Garzowski goes over for North Carolina State. The next time the Wolfpack gets the ball, they storm goalward again. Quarterback Jim Rossi picks up nine. Ike Clark gets the ball and the score. State shows a variety of fleet, hard running backs. And there's no containing the Wolfpack. This time it's Gwynn with the ball. Rossi keeps it and peels out right for the score. Terrapins of Maryland make a vain attempt to come back. Shiner passes to Martin for a first down on the Wolfpack 13. And a few plays later, they team up again for a touchdown. But it's too late. North Carolina upsets Maryland 36 to 14. Over 31,000 at California Memorial Stadium are disappointed in the first half performance of the California Bears against Iowa State Cyclones, who lead five to nothing. In the third period, the home team has come to life. Craig Morton's pass to flanker Jerry Mosher is good for a first down on the Cyclone 33. Morton gives to Blakeney, who picks up another 10 yards. Morton takes no chance with handoffs this close to the goal. He's stopped just short of it. On the next play, he smashes over to cap off the 80-yard march. A two-pointer after the TD gives the Bears an 8-5 to five lead. <laughs> Iowa State is not to be counted out. In the fourth period, Ken Bundy hits Ernie Cohn to pick up 30 yards. Bundy keeps, but the five is the closest the Cyclones can come to Pater. Halfback Dick Limerick, who's never kicked a field goal before today, makes his second attempt good. Tie is short live. The determined bear forward wall pushes the cyclone line back. Lanchfield picks up four. The cyclone line breaks through, but Craig Morton gets out of the trap on his own 41. He gets the ball off, and Lauren Hawley takes it the rest of the way to give California an opening day win 15 to 8. <laughs> 